right. Let's say a prayer. Jesus, lover of our soul, God who loves us enough to come all the way down, we just want to thank you for this moment, for your spirit in the midst of us, and for your word in song. And as we seek, oh God, to hear more from you, help the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. This is Psalm 96. Listen for a word from God. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to God all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless God's name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. God's marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but God made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are hers in the sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory due God's name. Bring an offering and come into God's courts. Worship God in holy splendor. Tremble before her all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. God will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before God because God is coming. God is coming to bring justice to the earth. God will judge the world with righteousness and the people with God's truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sing to the Lord. Tell of God's salvation. Declare God's glory, ascribe glory and strength to our God, and worship God alone. Our God, the one true God, our God is bigger, badder, more mysterious, more capable than all those other gods of the people around us. Praise God. Give God a standing ovation. Praise God for the goodness of God, for the grace of God, for the generosity of God, for the godness of God. Just, just give God a hand clap. Just give God a hand clap. Now, this is what the psalmist is saying. This is what the psalmist is saying. And what strikes me is kind of odd about it is that the psalmist is saying this to the people of Israel and Judah, people who were constantly at the mercy of all of the people around them, people with weird names like the Philistines and the Edomites and the Ammonites and the Moabites. <laughs> That's some weird stuff right there. <laughs> people who Conquered Israel just on a whim any time they felt like it. And don't forget, these people of God came to be the people of God while they were enslaved in Egypt. And somewhere right around the time that the psalmist was writing, praise God, these people were captured by the Babylonians and sent into exile. Praise God? Why? Why? If the test for having your God be, quote, revered above all the other gods is because somehow you kept them safe and, 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 you know, protected and they didn't have famine and they didn't have war, 
God failed that test. Even though God can do everything, it seems that God doesn't work like that. God did not then, nor does God now, twinkle her nose like Jeannie and make everything okay. God does, does not now, nor did God then, snap in Z formation, and then everything was fabulous and hunky-dory. Expecting that, thinking about God like that, seems like it sets us up to have our hearts broken. Some of us live in our relationship with God as though we have a contract with God that sounds like this. I will be faithful to God and in exchange for that, God will rescue me. Or perhaps more honest, if God will rescue me, I will be faithful. Hmm. That sounds very convenient, doesn't it? That's why they say there's no atheist in the foxhole. Show me the good stuff, God. Come on, God. Do your thing. Work your wonder-working power. And if you do, I'll be a good little Christian. If I believe in you, Make my life perfect, fabulous, stress-free, conflict-free. Because you're a genie, and I can rub you and ask for three wishes. Or you're like a rabbit's foot in my pocket, bringing me good luck. No, people. No, that's not the promise God made. God said, I will be your God, and you will be my people. I be God, you be people. The reason the psalmist told Israel to praise God isn't because they had a magical arrangement with God to keep them safe. The reason the psalmist told the people to praise God is just because God is God. Because God's promise is to be God all the time, every day, 24-7. And then they get to be the people. The reason to praise God is in the promise of the presence of God. The promise in the relationship with God. The promise that is in the purpose of God. I will be God and you will be my people. It is because God is faithful to God's promises that we can open up our lips and say, hide me, oh my Savior, hide. Till the storms of life are past. It's because God is faithful that we can count on God being who God said. God is, I will be your God and you will be my people. No magic formulas. No automatic rescue button to be pushed. No, say save me and then God shows up and does it actually. Praising God is something we're invited to do because it is testimony about what God has done and what God can do and what God will do in the future. We have witnesses that have gone before us that show us that God might not know, not come exactly when God want God, but God will come when? Right on time. And God doesn't come with a switch that turns off suffering. God comes with a salve that is with us, no matter what happens. God comes not as protective bubble that keeps us from harm, but God comes as power to sustain us and keep us. God does not come as litmus test for who's good and who's bad and who's in and who's out, but God comes as a lifeboat to float us on the waters of trouble and take us to a place of hope. Somebody needs to say amen. 
I like to read a woman named Cheryl Strayed, uh, who wrote a book, uh, Colin, called Sh Sugar, right? Meditations by Sugar. She tells the story of a woman whose six-month-old baby um, was having surgery. And the woman wasn't sure if there was a God. She just, she just wasn't sure if there was a God. And so, and so she was wrestling with that. And Cheryl herself says that she's an atheist. But here's what she told her. She told her that if we expect a quid pro quo spiritual relationship with God, all we do is set us and God up for failure. She said, if we lean on the rickety fence called, I pray to God, and God does exactly what I want, then we are going to be always disappointed. Paul's testimony is that he learned how to survive, whether he was hungry or full, because he could do all things through Christ who strengthened him. Now that's Paul, and he wrote a long time ago. But let me tell you my testimony. My testimony is about two weeks ago, I was pressed in every way. You all might not know it, but pastors do not have magic power. <laughs> pastors actually do not have magic power. We used to in the old days, but not anymore. <laughs> Today's pastors are human beings <laughs> with issues. And when we get tired, we're just tired. And so about two weeks ago it was that I was planning worship for next year and looking at programming for next year, but preaching this year's sermons and thinking about this year's pride and, oh, by the way, working with Chad on stewardship and just trying to do care for the people in our congregation who need care. Many of the people in Middles Church are struggling in their bodies right now, especially with cancer, almost like cancer's in the water. So I called Pat Powers, who is not just my congregant, but my friend, just called to check on her on a Thursday. And she sounded weak. She sounded like she was having a hard time breathing. I said, Pat, do you need something? Do you need a visit? No, Jackie, mommy's here. Mommy's here. And mommy's leaving on Mother's Day. I'm good till Mother's Day. Well, Saturday night, Pat died. Pat died. Mommy couldn't stop Pat from dying. And her death broke my heart. I mean, it broke my heart. Mommy had to go back to Florida, so we already had two weddings on a Saturday. I did two weddings and a funeral that Saturday. Two weddings and a funeral that Saturday, woke up the next morning, preached a sermon, went in the afternoon, taught the young adults about race, my favorite thing to talk about, and then came back in the night and sung a song. Actually had a voice. What I'm trying to tell you is that God does not promise us that we will not experience death. We will experience death. God does not promise us that we won't experience grief. Oh, yes, we will experience grief and heartache and heartbreak and hard times and horror. But what God does promise is to be with us. God's name, God's code name is Emmanuel. God with us always, no matter what. There's no bargaining chip that we have. If we be faithful, God will protect us from hurt. No. The bargaining chip we have is because God is faithful. God will see us through it. God will sustain us through the storm, through the heartache, through the headache, through the hunger. Darlings, we need a better understanding about God. That little God we've created that seems like it's a talisman, that little God that we think we've got in our pocket who doesn't love anybody but our kind of people, we need to get rid of that God. The God that we have in our other pocket called, uh, if I'm good, God will keep me from being hurt. I've got news for you. Bad things happen to good people every day. We need to get rid of that God too. The God we want to hang on to is the God that promises that no matter how high our highs and no matter how low our lows, no matter how tough it gets, God will never, ever forsake us. So the psalmist told the psalmist people to praise God no matter what. Praise God through storms and hurricanes and tsunamis and earthquakes. Praise God. 
Praise God when innocent people are killed just because of the way they love and whom they love. Praise God. Praise God when little kids are shot in the classrooms. Praise God when drones drop on innocent children in foreign lands. Praise God when you don't know how to pay your bills. Praise God when you don't know how you're going to get through. Praise God because you got to exercise your praise God muscle. Praise God because if you don't exercise it, it'll atrophy. Praise God for the sheer power and presence of God in your life. Think of God's goodness. God's goodness to you. Didn't God wake you up this morning? Didn't God start you on your way? Hasn't God kept you from falling? Didn't God brighten up your dark day? When you think of all the things you've been through, you look around and you wonder, who was back there making it all right? You look down and you think, how, how did I make it to the other side? The only way you got there is because God is God all the time. You praise God to exercise your praise muscle, yes. <laughs> not because you're going to manipulate God with your thanks. Mm. You're just grateful because God is God all day long. Yes. Yes. Praise God. With everything you've got, and listen to the trees and the seas join in the human chorus, pray, praise God. Thank you. Praise him. Yes. Praise her. Praise God. Amen. Amen.